Hi there, welcome again to my channel. Today our topic is about English 10, Module 7, Lesson 1. And the title is Conjunctions in Spoken Text. But before that, of course, kung bago ka palang sa channel na to, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and also click the notification bell in order to be updated with my uh, new video. And of course, please share also. Now let us start. Lesson 1, Conjunctions in Spoken Text. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to do the following. First, use conjunctions according to their function. And then compose a letter using conjunctions and appreciate the importance con of conjunctions in spoken text. This is uh, supposed to be appreciate the importance of my obituarito. This is only a uh, typographical error. All right. Now, what's in? Here are the properties of well-written well text. First, we have fluency. When you say fluency, this is the ability of a student to talk with the flow of ideas without any difficulty. And then, language appropriateness. This is the use of appropriate language in a, a written or spoken text. And then grammar. This is, of course, the correct use of the part of speech in a spoken or written text. And uh, in this particular lesson, this deals about the use of, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, coordinating and subordinating conjunctions. And next one is clarity. In a written or spoken text, the thoughts and ideas should be clear. That means it should be, uh, it should, it can be understood clearly by the reader or uh, by the audience. All right, what is new? Directions, read the sentences below and study the functions of the highlighted words. By the way, I'd like you to uh, be ready with your module while you are watching this video in order for you to understand clearly. All right, number one, I listen to the video attentively for I am attending an online lesson. Now here, this sentence is divided into two parts. The first part is the independent clause. Now notice here, this is called independent clause because it, it, it expresses a complete thought. We have a subject I and we have a predicate. Listen to the video attentively. In other words, this independent clause can also be considered as a simple sentence. Pwede natin siya lagyan dito ng period and we can disregard the other part of the sentence. It will not affect the thought of the sentence because it still expresses a complete thought. Now, in the second part, this is also called an independent clause. Again, it is an independent clause because it can stand alone. We can consider this also as a simple sentence. I am attending an online lesson. Even if we disregard this part of the sentence, it is still a perfect sentence. It is a simple sentence. That's why it is called independent clause. Now, here in the middle, this four is called coordinating conjunction. The function of this coordinating conjunction is just to connect these two independent clauses. All right. Number two, she didn't speak to anyone and nobody spoke to her. Now, this uh, sentence is also divided into two parts. The first part is also an independent clause, and again, it expresses a complete thought. We have a subject, she, and we have the predicate, didn't speak to anyone. So it is called independent clause. And the other part is, nobody spoke to her. This is also an independent clause, because we have a subject, and we have a predicate, spoke to her. Nobody spoke to her. Kahit tanggalin natin itong first part, it is still a perfect sentence. That is why this is called independent clause. And at the middle here, 
This and is our coordinating conjunction. The function of this coordinating conjunction is just to connect the two independent clauses. All right. Number three, the teachers do not expect students to be late, nor do they expect to be disobeyed. Now, the first part here is an independent clause because we have a subject teachers and we have also the predicate do not expect students to be late so it is an independent clause actually if we remove the second part it does not affect the first uh, the first part okay the second part is do they expect to be disobeyed all right this is also an independent clause because it still expresses a complete thought we have the subject they and we have the predicate uh, do expect to be disobeyed okay now here in the middle nor is our coordinating conjunction the function of this coordinating conjunction is also to connect these two independent clauses okay now in number four this is different. The first part is independent clause. Again, it expresses a complete thought. But the second part here, if she will promise not to tell others, this is not an independent clause, but this is called dependent clause because here this part does not express a complete thought. This has no meaning unless you, unless you connect this with the independent clause. If you are going to remove this part, it does not express a complete thought. If she will promise not to tell others, so what? It does not mean anything. So, in order for this part to have a sense, it should be connected to this part in order to have a perfect sense. So, this is called dependent clause and if here is functioning as a subordinating conjunction this is different from the first part the coordinating conjunction because the function of this is to introduce the dependent clause Nagi introduce lang siya now the first part here is independent clause the second part is here is dependent clause okay number five I started singing when I was five years old. Now, the first part here is an independent clause because it expresses a complete thought. Now, the second part here is a dependent clause. By the way, dependent clause is also the same with subordinate clause. Now, this dependent clause cannot stand alone because it does not express a complete thought. Again, it it expresses only a complete thought if it is connected with the independent clause. Nagkakaroon lang siya ng kahulugan kapag ito ay dinugtong mo dito sa independent clause. Alright. And here in the middle, the word when is our subordinating conjunction. Again, the, uh, the purpose or the function of this subordinating conjunction is just to introduce the dependent clause and to connect this to the independent clause. All right. Number six, I respect my parents because they give me life. And the first part is an independent clause. Again, it is also a simple sentence. Even if you remove this part, it still has a perfect sense. But the second part here is a dependent or subordinate clause because it does not express a complete thought. It cannot stand alone. Nakakaroon lang siya ng meaning kapag idirugtong mo siya rito sa independent clause. Alright. Now, the word because is our subordinating conjunction. Again, the purpose of this subordinating conjunction because is just to introduce the dependent clause. Okay. Now, Questions. What do you think is the function of the highlighted words in the sentence? That is uh, what is stated in your module. Now, the answer here is the function of the highlighted uh, words is uh, 
coordinating and subordinating conjunction. Now, how do these highlighted words connect the ideas in the sentences? They connect the ideas in the sentences by functioning as coordinating and subordinating conjunctions. Those highlighted words are used just to link the ideas. Pinagdudutong lang niya yung mga ideas doon sa mga sentence. Yung coordinating conjunction ay nagdudugtong ng dalawang independent clauses at yung uh, subordinating conjunction naman ay nagdudugtong ng independent sa dependent clause. Alright. Now, what is it? Conjunction is a part of speech that sticks together words, phrases, and clauses. When we say sticks together, it joins together words, phrases, and clauses. Without conjunction, you cannot join together words, phrases, and clauses. Okay, there are two types of conjunction, coordinating conjunction and subordinating conjunction. Number one to number three, examples are coordinating conjunctions, while number four to number six are subordinating conjunctions. All right. Now, coordinating conjunction connects two independent clauses, while subordinating conjunction links dependent clause to an independent clause. Okay. Now, the common examples of coordinating conjunctions are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Ito rin yung tinatawag natin na uh, fun boys. Okay. That is the uh, acronym for for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Fun boys. Okay. Now, yes, uh, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Okay. While well, subordinating conjunctions have the following examples, like, uh, if, when, because, marami pa yan, just like, uh, until, after, okay. And then, uh, cohesion is a text quality where words and sentences stick together. Pag meron cohesion, ay uh, madali mong maiintindihan ang sentence or paragraph kasi gumagamit ng mga coordinating and subordinating conjunctions. This word originated from the term cohere which means to stick together. Okay. Now it is important to achieve cohesion since it will direct listeners or readers thoughts and interest to the development of the presented argument. Without these cohesive devices, yung mga uh, coordinating and subordinating conjunction, the ideas wouldn't be clearly understood. Hindi maiintindihan yung mga idea kapag hindi gumamit ng cohesive devices na coordinating and subordinating conjunctions. Now, to link part, uh, to link together the part of text like words, sentences, and paragraphs, conjunctions and cohesive devices can be used. Kapag hindi na ka nagamit nitong mga cohesive devices na ito, katulad ng uh, coordinating and subordinating conjunctions, yung mga ideas ay hindi maidudugtong ng maayos at hindi maiintindihan ng mga bumabasa at ng mga nakikinig. Alright, activity 1.1. Directions, Josie, went, uh, Josie sent you a letter after the community quarantine was lifted. Now, write your reply to her by using conjunctions to achieve, to achieve cohesion in your letter. Now, I'm going to give you a sample answer. If you want to copy this down, you just need to pause the video and then start copying. All right. Here is the uh, letter. My, friend, my dear friend, how are you? I have not heard anything from you for a long time. It has been months since we talked. The quarantine we experienced limits our movements and we are not able to visit each other. Can you tell me your experiences during the quarantine period too? I am very excited to hear and know your story. I can't wait to hear from you, your friend Josie. Now this is the sample answer. I'm glad, uh, dear Josie, I'm glad to hear from you. 
When the quarantine was enforced in our place, I was really depressed. Now, take note of this highlighted word. This is our uh, subordinating conjunction. I was no longer allowed to play outside, and I was not allowed also to see my friends. I want to visit my classmates, but my parents won't allow me. I want to go to the mall, but my father told me just to stay at home in order to avoid the COVID-19 virus. My mother told me if there is no quarantine restriction, I would be allowed to go out. When the quarantine was lifted, I was very happy because I would be able to see my friends. I was able to play outside and my parents allowed me also to visit my neighbors and friends. I hope to see you soon. Your friend, all right, you are going to write here your name and of course your signature above your name. All right. Here is activity 1.3, directions, read the excerpt of a news story regarding the opening of classes this school year. Give your reactions on the statement of Deputy Secretary Briones, use conjunctions in presenting your idea and reaction. As it continues to receive reactions on the start of a new school year in August, the Department of De uh, Education on Thursday maintained that the school opening needs to push through to ensure that the education of Filipino learners will not be further disrupted. In, in an online press briefing led by Education Secretary Leonor Briones, along with other secretaries Anna in Sevilla and Attorney Pomocino Maraloan, the DepEd key officials discussed concerns on school opening and the alternative learning modalities. Briones said that the DepEd is aware of the calls to suspend the opening of classes this coming August 24 due to the continued threat of COVID-19. But what other options do we have? We have to go on because education must continue, she added. Brioni said that the health and safety of learners and teachers remain the utmost consideration of DepEd. All right, here is the suggested answer. Be ready with your ballpen and your paper. The statement of Secretary Bionis is good, but she did not elaborate how to ensure the safety of the students and teachers. Now, take note of this uh, bold and underlined word. These are our uh, conjunctions. Because of the coronavirus, there is a possibility that students and teachers would be exposed to the said virus. If the secretary is concerned with the safety of the students and teachers, there should be a specific and clear instructions about this matter. There should be a contingency plan and the specific instructions on how to deal with students and teachers affected with the COVID-19 virus. Now, if you have learned something on this video, now again, please don't forget to like, subscribe, click the notification bell in order to be updated, and of course, Please share also. Thank you very much for watching. See you again.